I am making toys of all 150 original Pokemon true to scale relative to each other. And as a baseline, this is an Ash figure that I 3D printed. So if Ash is this big, this is how big a Diglett is relative to him, as well as some of the biggest Pokemon, like Dragonite, Lapras, and Onyx. Yep, I'm aware well that this is a Dragonair and not a Dragonite. If you can't learn to stand up on your own, how are you ever going to evolve into Dragonite? And one of my personal favorites, Gyarados. 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 What? One of the interesting things about working on this project is I realize that there are so many things about the original Pokemon sizes and stats that make no sense. Like Pikachu. This Pokemon never gets any stronger no matter how many seasons of the Pokemon TV series we get. This electric rat mouse always gets his butt kicked by Pokemon who should be able to easily defeat. And I guess it makes sense there's animals like this, just like my dog, who no matter how many life experiences they have, they're still terrified and don't understand basic commands. Roll over. Shake a hand. Do a treat. Do you understand what I'm saying? No! You got tummy rub, tummy scratch is the only thing you understand. Oh. Relaxation. Nice. Truthfully? That'd be a rough life. Anyway, enough of that. Check out this Onyx. I printed this toy on an FDM printer and it's one of the biggest Pokemon prints in this collection. And with this Pokemon being made of rock or stone, you'd assume it would weigh like 6,000 pounds with its size, but Onyx only weighs 463 pounds. And by contrast, we have Golem, who weighs 661 pounds despite being way smaller. Just look at these two compared to each other, compared to Ash. It makes no sense and it's not not the only thing that doesn't make any sense, so let's look at some of the smallest Pokemon that I made. I made all of these Pokemon with a resin 3D printer to capture all of the detail that I needed. They're done curing. They come out just like this. This cool little Nidorino. I think my favorite from this batch though has got to be <laughs> this little Oddish. Look at how cool that is. And unfortunately, I had awful brushes to use, horrible acrylic paint, and some of these turned out pretty bad. Now it's time to prime these. I must have just had a rough day when I was painting these. But it's these smaller prints that are my favorite. They're adorable and they remind me of eye candy for some reason, and I love how this Oddish turned out. Vulpix is amazing. Magikarp looks hilarious. I couldn't resist painting the X's on his eyes. And honestly, Magikarp is probably the best Pokemon out of all 150 because he evolves into this. And there's nothing more inspiring than a useless lump of flesh that can turn into something that just instills fear into people. I guess what I'm saying is that Magikarp is just, you know, my spirit animal. But there was something that occurred to me while making some of the smallest in this collection, Diglett and Doug Trio, and that is nobody even knows what these Pokemon even look like. And how is it possible that when you catch one, it still has its dig hole with it? Or whatever we want to call this hole that Diglett and Doug Trio pop out of. And how is this dig hole okay. present whether a Diglett or Doug Trio is fighting on land, water, or concrete? What even is that dig hole? And there are plenty of artist renditions of what this Pokemon probably looks like under ground, but officially we don't really know. And another Pokemon that makes no sense when it comes to stats and size is Tentacruel. The official stats for this Pokemon is 5'3 and 120 pounds, but I made mine much bigger because there's this episode from the original TV show with a giant Tentacruel who controlled smaller Tentacruels and Tentacools. And it actually turns out that this sort of makes sense because Tentacruel is only five feet tall, which is around the same size as a full grown pincer. But the giant Tentacruel Pokemon episode came from from Team Rocket dumping toxic waste into the ocean, which led to the giant sized tentacruel. So I made my tentacruel somewhere in the middle of being normal and oversized because I think this tentacruel looks pretty cool oversized and because the larger size just looks so nice. good inside the lineup of all the other Pokemon I made. And even though printing and painting 150 original Pokemon was a way bigger project than I thought, it's been insanely fun. Okay. And while I'm only halfway through this project, here are some of my favorite Pokemon that have turned out really cool. Gengar, which I printed with this cool transparent resin. I'll get to that in a minute. Lapras is one of the coolest turnout. This printed in full color. I didn't have to paint it. Magikarp, like I said, I love the X's on the eyes. Charizard turned out really cool. Poliwag, I never realized that this little thing was a mouth. I always thought it was a nose when I was a kid. Dragonair and Dratini also turned out awesome, which printed in full color on an F. 
FDM printer. Ghastly looks amazing in the same transparent purple. And I really love how Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Squirtle, and War Turtle turned out. So printing and painting 150 little Pokemon toys was actually a time consuming project. I didn't realize how time consuming. So I spent a lot of my time watching Pokemon facts on YouTube while I was working on these. And then I started to realize how many sketchy things that the creators of these games and TV shows snuck into this stuff. Like this moment in Pokemon XY where some girl loves talking about how fun Onyx is to ride because it's so big. I mean, it is a pretty big Pokemon. It's a decent, this is a decent sized Onyx. Mine is, mine's. Decent size, Absolutely. pretty average, I'd say. Then there's this moment from Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which has this couple who send out an Onyx and Cloister to battle together, which, uh, yeah, <laughs> boy, that's suspicious. And now that I'm an adult seeing these things, I can't tell whether I should laugh or be horrified. Then there's this scene from Pokemon Black and White, where a female trainer asks you, if I'm wearing a bikini, where do I put my Pokeballs? I'll tell you where she's keeping them. She's got a giant cloister who packs them around for her. So if you ask me, we should all start advocating for Pokemon labor rights because that's got to be one tired cloister carrying around Pokeballs all day so this girl doesn't have to. You got to be kidding me. And speaking of bikini days, if you find yourself on the beach having Pokemon battles in your swimsuit and a cold front comes in, consider grabbing a cloak from Nightweave.com. It's a family business that my wife and I started making fully functional cloaks that look and feel awesome for the journey there and back again. And there's a link in this video bio for 10% off your next order. These things will keep you warmer than a Charmander in July. So as we've already established, I learned a lot about the Pokemon universe during this project, things that I had never considered before while I printed, painted, and made all of these toys. Like the most slept on Pokemon in the universe is Ditto, literally. It's the most slept on Pokemon. Only Dittos don't do much sleeping because they're basically breeding slaves in the game used to pump out eggs day and night so that you can try your luck at getting a shiny Pokemon. There's so much unethical stuff in this game and I kind of love that everybody ignores it. <laughs> We've all just accepted it. Another weird thing that occurred to me about the Pokemon universe is everyone also just ignores how Geodude is this weird rock with arms who just floats around. But weird innuendos and things that don't make sense aside, this has been a major nostalgia inducing project. I printed Gengar and Haunter out of this cool transparent purple resin, which was sort of inspired by this 90s Gengar toy, which was transparent and something about this imprinted on me as kid. It's probably one of my favorite toys that I ever played with when I was younger. And if you had this toy, you can't tell me these images don't elicit some sort of childhood nostalgia for you. There's something about certain Pokemon or toys that bring you right back to being a kid. And I think that's why this franchise is so popular. The same thing happens when you pull out the old Pokemon cards. Nothing quite hits the same as a holographic starter final evolution from the first run of cards, or the way that Tangela, Cubone, or Drowsy cards look. There's something so classic about the original artwork, and making toys out of these just brought me right back to those feelings of opening up a pack and getting these as a kid. So obviously I have a lot more Pokemon to print. I've only completed one of the legendary birds. I still have Dragonite to print to complete the Dragon Evolutions, and I have a small group of fighting Pokemon that still need to be painted. So if you wanna see this collection when it's done, and here's some more really interesting, cringe, sketchy, and odd things about the Pokemon universe, go ahead and like this video, subscribe for part two, and let me know what else you think I should include in terms of factoids for that second video when I reveal all 150 Pokemon plus a really cool diorama display that I'm gonna keep these things on because I don't have enough junk on this shelf behind me.